Whenever a YouTube video opens with a voiceover, you know you will hear something poetic. Chicago has over 3 million residents and is broken up into over 200 neighborhoods. Join us today as we embark on a journey to Bridgeport, widely considered to be the South Side's coolest neighborhood. Good morning from Lincoln Park. We're about to catch the brown line so we can transfer to the orange line so we can get to Bridgeport. just hopped off the brown line at Washington and Wells. We're waiting on the orange line train to Midway. Halstead stop of the Orange Line. There's some hidden street art. This is Bear Champ by JC Rivera. What's really good, YouTube? I'm Louis Gusto, and today we're in a Chicago neighborhood that sounds like it could have been named by a nautical name generator, Bridge. Port. We're gonna be taking you around this south side neighborhood showing you fun things to do, great places to eat and drink, and because we're not basic content creators, we're not gonna just make a Google search and then type up a list to call that a neighborhood guide. We're actually raising the bar for what it means to create Chicago content, so make sure you finesse that like button. I bet you thought our first stop this morning in Bridgeport, Chicago was gonna be for coffee or breakfast. Aha, gotcha. Today we're actually stopping for a nature break. Palmasano Park, which is technically Chicago's oldest park at over 400 million years old. I think Lincoln Park comes close, but not quite. This used to be a quarry, but even further back, it was a coral reef. So let's do like Bob Ross and get inspired by nature's wondrous beauty. Palmasano Park on a windy and cold morning. Feels like six degrees right now. Sometime after the coral reef dried up, it was purchased by an independent company and used as a quarry. They extracted dolomite limestone. I love dolomite, everybody loves dolomite. But they extracted so much limestone over the years that then they had to use this as a dumping ground. So they just kind of threw construction debris in here. City of Chicago stepped in and said, ah, uh -uh, not on my watch. Let's turn this into a beautiful park. After all, the quarry inspired Flintstones. You know the intro when Fred jumps off the dinosaur? Yeah, they filmed that right here. It's so windy outside and this is why we say we're the number one content creators in Chicago because we're not just getting phone footage and then doing a voiceover where it's nice and warm at home. No, we're actually out in the cold weather creating content for y'all. So make sure you finesse that like button. You can put Rocky music here. Ready? Drago! Drago! We climbed the mountain at Palmasano Park. I guess we're standing on limestone. I'm not quite sure. Or maybe we're standing in a landfill. <laughs> in any case, 
there would be a beautiful view of the Chicago skyline right now, but it's one of them foggy days, so you can't really see anything. It's fun being out here. There's some kids sledding on the other side of this hill. We're just trying to survive because it's really windy. Bridgeport is one of the core Chicago neighborhoods. It wasn't a former suburb that then got annexed to the city. It's also a very important neighborhood. It was vital in putting Chicago on the world stage. Now, we're not gonna get into all the history of Bridgeport because I don't wanna put y'all to sleep, even though that was the only thing separating my channel from the others. Not the cinematography, the incredible personality, or the phenomenal editing. It was just history that separated my channel from all the others. And now, I'm just trying to be like everybody else. Now we're at our coffee stop. We're at Bridgeport Coffee House on Morgan and 31st Street. They're known for importing coffee from all around the globe. It's frigid outside, so we had to warm up with a couple of hot drinks. We got the chai latte with oat milk, a drip coffee, I'll tell you about that in a second, a blondie, and a lemon square. As y'all can already imagine, this coffee has no cream, no sugar. It's the Santa Josefita blend desde El Salvador. They source their coffee and import it from all over the world from trusted farmers. And I cannot wait till it cools down sufficiently so I could actually take a drink. Well, let me see. Bottoms up. Be careful. <sighs> this is especially great because it, it is polar outside. All right, I'm gonna try my lemon square. Mmm. Mmm. Lemony. That was quite the Arctic adventure through Palmasano Park. Now I'm feeling much warmer, much cozier inside Bridgeport Coffee House. I am able to show you my Arctic nails to match the occasion. <laughs> it was frozen outside. I ordered a chai latte with oat milk. I also ordered a blondie. I don't think I've had one of these in a long time. I was trying to decide between a blondie and a brownie. I haven't had this, so. Ooh. This is, this is thick. Mmm. Although, it's not the exact same flavor. It immediately reminded me of a chocolate chip cookie that you would stack like four times high. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Claire baked one of these on Dessert Person. All right, Bridgeport Coffee definitely gets my five diamond award. That coffee, the Santa Josefita blend, was phenomenal, so, so good. And this, my friends, is why you gotta start drinking black coffee if you don't already, because then you can actually taste the flavor, all the notes, and really appreciate that these beans come from hardworking farmers all over our beautiful planet Earth. Maybe that's a little too philosophical for our coffee stop, but that's how good I'm feeling. The lemon square, the blondie, both good. Dope atmosphere, you can study there. They have food, sandwiches, breakfast, all kinds of stuff. So we're on Morgan and 31st. Let's explore more of Bridgeport. Our next stop today is St. Mary of Perpetual Help. It's a parish that dates back to 1882. Dang, that's pretty old. This is a historic parish and we were really hoping to visit, especially since today is Sunday, but it's actually currently closed. Their final mass of the day is at 10.30. So I'm imagining most of the parishioners live out in the burbs by now. It's okay, it's still a really beautiful building and you can see photos of it on the internet. That's as good as we're gonna get today, so sorry.
Bridgeport, Chicago is directly connected to the loop via the Orange Line. You can get off at the Halstead stop just like we did this morning. We've actually been to Bridgeport a couple of times for the channel now for the hot dogs and the hidden gems, but this is the first time we're actually doing a whole neighborhood film. We haven't been to every single Chicago neighborhood yet because we actually create quality content that people want to watch and that just takes time. So even though we've been doing this three plus years, we've only done like 30 something neighborhoods. If we didn't care about the quality and we just wanted to put out any old thing, yes, we could have hit like 200 plus by now. Quality over quantity. That's what my abuelo always told me. And it's a phrase I live by to this very day. Bridgeport is on the south side of Chicago. You can get to Pilsen, McKinley Park, Chinatown, Bronzeville, or the Union Stockyards from here. Well, what was what's left of the Union Stockyards anyway. Oh, by the way, did I mention? We got a Patreon, y'all. So make sure you support. The White Sox play in Bridgeport. Bridgeport has produced a lot of mares. It was also important because Bridgeport's early residents worked on the Illinois Michigan Canal. I don't know if you heard of it, but that waterway was pretty important to the success of Chicago, at least the early success. fish tacos, one potato, one shrimp, and uh, chips and salsa. It's not Taco Tuesday, but rather Taco Sunday here in Bridgeport. We are at Antique Taco on 35th and Morgan. I've been wanting to try this place for a long time. They also have a location in Wicker Park. So if we love this one, we will have to try that location as well. The whole theme of this restaurant is like vintage roadside store or stop or whatever. I really dig it because back in the days in Florida, we used to have to road trip from UF back to Miami back and forth, so I liked stopping at these roadsides. Very vintage Americana. They got all the vintage license plates and cool old school travel guides, hubcaps on them. We got four tacos. I got a little hungry, so I started eating already. We got two fish, a shrimp, and a potato. Potato taco. We also got some chips, and here's the dip. I'm looking right at it. All right, like I said, I was so hungry, I could not even wait to start filming. I've been walking around Bridgeport. It's cold outside. Can you blame me? Let's get into some fish taco. Mmm. Mm -mm. It fell apart. <laughs> These are handmade fresh tortillas. So, so good. I gotta try the shrimp taco. Well, I already tried it, but for you guys. Looks like there's some kale in here, some shrimp, or some obviously shrimp, right? And a little bit of sauce. Mm -hmm. That combination of having a fish taco, then a shrimp taco, off the charts, out of this world. Apparently their brisket tacos are pretty good too, so we got some things on the menu that we want to try next time, including those crab and shrimp flautas. Sound very intriguing. So yeah, those are my tacos. I broke open the chips and salsa. If tomato bisque could be a salsa, that would be it. <laughs> the unique one that I got today was potato. I hear there's poblano in it. They've got some thinly sliced chips as well. I started snacking on them because you know how I do. <laughs> so cool. If you're a vegetarian, you would love this. It's like a hearty, potato-y, poblano-y, and cheesy taco. Crispy cheese? <laughs> that was an amazing and kind of rare for our channel taco lunch. <laughs> I really, really love that potato taco. 
Holy cow. That was a great time at Antique Taco. We got to meet and speak with the owners, really down to earth peeps. Really appreciate the decor in there. The whole vibe is just really cool. And they're not like traditional Mexican tacos, but everybody else is doing fusion tacos. Why can't a Mexican do them as well? I really appreciated all the toppings in the tacos, the handmade tortillas. The whole vibe in there is dope. There's a Wicker Park location. And in fact, when we filmed our Wicker Park guide, we filmed part of it in front of the mural outside the antique taco. So it's all coming full circle. We are the number one source for Chicago neighborhood guides on the internet. Don't let anybody else tell you different because we're not just typing up a Google search and passing that off as content. And we're not doing 10 second videos on the phone saying, if you're looking for the best tacos in Chicago, make sure you come to Antique Taco. Anyway, it is a lovely day here in Bridgeport, despite the high winds, despite the cold, despite the snow on the ground, you know how we do. think of Chicago, the first thing that comes to mind may not be nautical themes, but in fact, the Chicago Maritime Museum will show you that you're wrong. Chicago really rose to glory on the backs of the shipping industry. This is a cool museum inside the former Spiegel Catalog Warehouse, which is actually Bridgeport's only landmark located right on Bubbly Creek. So here you get to take a journey. How do you call it? Um, in this museum, you get to take a cruise through Chicago's history. From the early days of Chicago when beaver pelts were traded for hats and Apple watch bands, all the way through the World Wars when Chicago was used as naval training grounds, waters. You can see how French fur traders were some of the first people over here. For many, many years, ships were so important to the city of Chicago. Not so much anymore. Most of the boats we got in Chicago now take tourists around the river so they can see the beautiful architecture. This society dates back to the 1980s and they've been preserving the history of Chicago's maritime deal. <laughs> it's also a space where they build and repair model ships. There's lots of things to read. It's appropriate for this museum to be in Bridgeport because this is where a lot of workers who helped build the Illinois and Michigan Canal lived in those early days. And according to the map, Bridgeport was just outside city limits back in the day. Obviously now it's part of the city. You used to be able to hop on a schooner to get to the loop from here. These days you could just take the orange line. We have made it to Bubbly Creek, the infamous body of water that forks off of the Chicago River. Now, when you hear the name Bubbly Creek, it may remind you of a refreshing, sparkling beverage, but I assure you, my friends, that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, if you would have taken a drink from Bubbly Creek back in the day, you may have found yourself with a little bit of a medical problem. It was basically sludge because all the meat packing factories, the union stockyards, they would dump entrails and animal waste and Lord knows whatever else. It actually caught on fire routinely. The Chicago Fire Department had to come in with them big old hoses. Chickens would walk on the surface of Bubbly Creek just to pick at the garbage and waste. That's how we got the phrase, don't count your chickens before they hatch. That's how we got the phrase, why did the chicken cross the road? Because Bubbly Creek was so thick, you could have considered it a road. If you read up on the description and history of this waterway, you may lose your appetite, so don't do it before breakfast. But today, Bubbly Creek is just slightly cleaner. I wouldn't take a dip in it yet, but they've been pumping pure oxygen into that bad boy. And for the first time in decades, wildlife is returning, plant life is returning. Matter of fact, we saw some Canadian geese taking a little swim, and it was very peaceful could have played some Blue Danube and I would have felt very good about that. All right, let's do a fit check. We got the Uniqlo parka in that navy blue. 
Got some uh, gloves I got from the Army Navy Supply Store in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. The Mitchell and Ness Retro White Sox Throwback Jersey with the red GU hoodie underneath. Got some Top Man jeans and the Air Force One Gore-Tex boots. While we're here at Bubbly Creek reflecting on Chicago's meatpacking past, make sure you subscribe. If this shot looks familiar to you, congratulations, pat yourself on the back. You are an OG member of Gusto Nation. Last time we stopped at Mars, it was for our Hidden Gems in Chicago film, and we had a lovely time. Now we're back. Technically, it's just over the border, which is Bubbly Creek in McKinley Park, but we're gonna count it as Bridgeport since the idea was birthed in Maria's Packaged Goods in Bridgeport. We Love Mars is one of our favorite breweries in the whole wide world, and trust me, we've tried a lot of beer in the whole wide world. It's the Lunar New Year celebration today at Mars Brewery, and I ordered the Lunar Rabbit. Because it is the year of the rabbit, I am hyped to have this because we were thinking of coffee. Then we thought, well, of course we gotta get the beer. <laughs> the Lunar Rabbit is a rice lager. I'm thinking maybe it'll taste a little bit like sake. Cheers. Hint of sake. Tastes more like beer, of course. <laughs> Right next to us is all the equipment for making this delicious beer. I'm trying the Electric Euphoria today, which is a goes with blood orange and key lime flavors in it. I cannot wait because blood orange and key lime are two of my favorite citrus flavors. Cheers. It's delicious. This is amazing. It's a very citrus forward beer, obviously. I was reading about what the Goes is. It originated in Gosler, Germany. It somehow made its way to Chicago, Illinois. That's how you know beer connects people from all around the world. One of the dopest things about Mars Brewing is that they always got a food pop-up going. Right now they're working with Taco Sublime. Big shouts to Khaled who brought us all this food to try. I cannot wait to sample this. We got a banh mi burger over here. Got some carne asada tacos, birria banh mi, shrimp rolls, and corn shrimp dumplings. This is so much food, so we're gonna have to share with everybody around us because Lord knows I eat a lot, but I can't eat all this. And it wasn't leg day today, so a corn shrimp dumpling. Mm. So that's covered in a bang bang sauce, little kernels of corn in there, and shrimp pieces. Really tasty. <laughs> I'm gonna try one of the shrimp rolls now. This also has bang bang sauce on it. Mm. So we're gonna continue this taco Sunday tradition with a carne asada taco. Dip it in a little bit of salsa. There's some red onion in there, a lot of cilantro, which I personally love. That steak is juicy and flavorful. And a crispy cheese inside there. Like that. Good, good. Thank you. All right, we're gonna squeeze a little bit of lime on that. This is the birria banh mi. Fun fact about me is I've actually not had birria tacos. So I'm actually having a birria banh mi before I have the taco version. So I know you gotta dip it in the consomme. So I'll just do that from here. Ooh la la, it's like an Italian beef. All right, here we go, sandwich time.
That is some quality bread. That is actually really, really delicious. That, man, that's, that meat is tender. The bread, it tastes freshly baked. And the sauce, or the consomme to dip it in, A++. So, got some french fries over here, and the banh mi burger. I don't even know what to expect from a banh mi burger. Let's take a look at that. Got some sauce in there, some shredded vegetables. Looks like that's a smash burger, actually. So we, we actually just put up today our New York City burger tour. We did a Chicago one last year. So I guess we're kind of continuing that burger tradition. <laughs> this is delicious, man. I love that burger bun. Insane, this is so good, wow. All this incredible food goes so well with the beer. The flavors just mesh well together. Now you can only find Taco Sublime at Mars Brewing right now as we're filming this. So make sure you come down, show your support. Honestly, I would recommend any of these entrees. The birria banh mi, the smash burger that's done like a banh mi, the banh mi burger, and the carne asada tacos. All super, super delicious. Wow, really good. Cheers. Here's their shrimp. We almost dropped the second oh. one. I saved it. Here's their shrimp roll. Yum. Which of these three do you want to try? Oh my lordy. They all look ridiculous. I think you should go for the burger. Just hold it over the tray. Take my chances with this burger. Lewis warned me that I have to hold it over the tray. I actually saw it while I was filming, obviously. That it was dripping all over the sides. <laughs> this is so good. I'm actually not sure if I've ever had like a real smash burger. I guess this is a fusion smash burger because it has two smash patties and a bunch of banh mi vegetables all in it. This is really good. Sesame seed bun. I love sesame seeds. This is gonna go perfectly with my rice lager. Round two at Mars. This is the Bubbly Creek. It's at Berlin Weiss with black cherry. Now Bubbly Creek. Where have I heard that name before? I don't have internet, so I can't tell y'all. But cheers. Okay. That's interesting. Wow. Well, I got a lot, <laughs> I look like a, a beer sommelier. I have a lot of different flavors going on right now because of all this amazing food. So the beer is definitely taking on an interesting flavor. I can't even describe it. I do taste the cherries though, and it's, a, it's like a no-nonsense beer. Very forward, I guess, I don't know. But it's good. Mars doesn't miss. This is the Jungle Boogie Pear. Normally we get the regular jungle boogie. It's a pale wheat ale with ruibos and pear. Very good. Tastes like candy. There's also a vintage arcade at Mars Brewing, so you got incredible beer on tap, incredible food from Taco Sublime, and incredible vintage arcade games, including Narissa and my new favorite, Root Beer Tapper. And you don't even need quarters. Just tap the little button, get credits. Got the Florida Weiss now.
said I don't cover the south side of Chicago. I hope y'all enjoy this tour of Bridgeport. In the next tour, I'll be throwing out the first pitch at Comiskey Park. Peace.